How's it going, Hui? Good to see you guys in the comments. Thank you guys so much. I'm excited to be here. I am in California. Hey, Michael. And so it's a little bit early, but I'm up. I'm ready to go. Got my coffee. I want to make it action packed. So I'm going to go through the agenda today and we've got some of the PR. So we're going to talk a little bit more about how do you promote an app, get downloads without actually being in the app store. So things outside of the app store. And I want to make it very beneficial to you guys. So if you've got questions, I want to run through this very quickly specific to your app. I'm happy to help you guys out in the comments, in the comments on the side. All right. So let's do this. All right, here we go. So we're going to talk about PR and I'm going to tell you my favorite growth hack on how to actually get PR on major publications. The greatest growth hack of all time is how do you drive tens of thousands of downloads without spending a nickel? I right, know, put dime. All right. And then other marketing campaigns. I want to talk about more creative marketing campaigns that not a lot of people are talking about. Everybody knows Facebook ads. Everybody knows search ads. I want to talk a little bit about more unique influencer marketing campaigns, Reddit campaigns, and how do you guys really leverage that? All right. So without further ado, let's get started. I am Steve Pyung, as Kate mentioned, I'm the founder of AppMasters.com. We do specialize in sort of coming up with different growth hacking strategies. So if you guys want to talk about some black hat side of the ASO, we can get into that a little bit later as well. I host a podcast. That's how I got it started, started in the space. I've been making apps since 2011 and 2013. I decided to finally take it seriously because I was always doing it on the side. So for you side entrepreneurs out there, there is hope for you. And I decided to learn from people that I really admired in the space. So in 2013, I said, all right, I'm going to start a podcast, really learn from some greats out there. So I interviewed the co-founder Shazam, the creative Crossy Road, Color Switch, Rovio. I've had a lot of the big names out there to really learn from them so that we can all collectively grow together. And that's what really set me off. So six months after starting the podcast, I ended up leaving my startup job in San Francisco and then running this full time. All right, just some of the accomplishments. I'll just let it go through really fast, but just to know, just so you guys know, I'm legit. I've helped launch a app that made it to number two paid overall. We've been on all these big major publications, including TechCrunch. And then we've had 28 different Apple features, and this was our very first one. So it was a lot of fun helping clients do that. And we can get into some of the tricks and strategies around that if you guys want to get into it. App Store optimization. So we can talk a little bit more about the Black Hat side. I think a lot of people understand the 101. I like to talk about the 201 meaning what's the really advanced stuff of ASO. So without further ado, you, you ready to go? Michael, let's rock. Well, give me a yes. There you go. Let's do this. All right. Maxim. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's talk about PR. So here it is, guys. <laughs> Thank you. So here's my favorite trick for PR, right? Here's how you get into major, major publications. And I would like to do this. I want to do case studies too. So I want to make it interactive. So hopefully I can share my screen and kind of go into this. But here it is. It is finding the reporter at a big publication that just started working there. So I'm on LinkedIn right now and I put in reporter and you can put writer too. And then you sort it by the company. So right here, you see, I sort it through TechCrunch. Now it's going to take a little bit of work, but it's not as much. It's like five minutes. What you want to go through is just Go through the one that obviously is talking about your category. So certain ones are talking about technology, some in health, some might be talking about more like the shared economy. But you want to try to find one that matches the category you're targeting, that your, launch, your app is launching, and then that just started working there. Because a lot of people are going after, Arrington is no longer there, but Sarah Perez, Anthony Ha, these really like well-known TechCrunch writers, and not everybody's going after the ones that have just started working there. So that's how I've been able to get onto TechCrunch. It just requires a little bit of work, but it is it pays off. And here's the trick. Once you find that person, it's really easy to find their email address. It's usually just on TechCrunch.com or their Twitter profile. But here's the secret. You give them the exclusive. So here's the exact email that I sent on behalf of a client. It's all you know out there. So I'm not I'm not worried about sharing this with you guys. But what you want to do, and the key is say Megan exclusive. So I found Megan. She just started working there. She was a good fit for who I wanted to pitch. And I put exclusive. Now, what that means to Megan, and reporters love this, is that they get to write it for the very they're the first ones to write it. So meaning all other publications, they don't get to write it first. Megan gets the first right. And that, and as a new reporter, 
man, that's great. Like this is what you dream of, right? Getting your first exclusive. And so I write a pretty short email. What I try to do is keep it really bullet point, try to make it skimmable. As you can see, this is very skimmable. They're not all, I don't have long paragraphs at all. I have a video, I talk about the website and, and then I pitch her, okay? There are tools out there called banana tag, just like the fruit, bananatag.com that allows you to track whether Megan opened the email or not. Okay. So the, what I did was I saw that Megan opened it and I followed up with the game. I said, Hey Megan, you know, you guys probably send this a bunch of times. Hey Megan, just want to follow up. And I, she opened that. I was like, man, what's happening? She's not responding to me. So here's a secret. Okay. Here's the best way to follow up. This is my third email to Megan. And this is what finally got her attention. That was a dramatic pause. Here we go. This, this is the last email. All right. This is an old sales trick, but I sort of made it modern to the emoji era. I said, Hey Megan, which emoji best describes your take on the story? A thumbs up, B thumbs down, C thinking about it and D poop emoji. I'm trying to add humor. I'm trying to add personality to this email and I'm trying to make it easy for Megan to respond. All she has to say is A, B, C, or D. Guess what she said? C, can we get on a call next week? We got on a call and boom, we were on TechCrunch. And I didn't have to do this in my next for my next client. I didn't have to do all this crazy stuff with Megan. This was my first interaction with Megan. And I just emailed Megan again. She's like, hey, that sounds interesting, Steve. Let's do it. So once you have that connection, then boom, you're ready to go. All right. All right. I'm going to answer Hugh's question before I move on because it is about PR. How much of the percentage, how much the percentage of agreed reporter in general specific industry by this hack? Uh, I don't, Hugh, do me a favor, just reword that. I don't know exactly what you mean. How much of the percentage of a greed reporter in general or specific, in, I guess what you want to do, if I'm understanding your question right, Huey, is try to find one that is specific to the industry that you're targeting. But if you can't find that, then a general reporter would work just fine. You know, a lot of these reporters have these bio profiles on their publication that talks about, hey, I like to write about this. And so you can tell them right off the bat. I knew a little bit more detail. Megan liked to, to write about minority founders. And so in my first email, you probably did, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I made a joke. I said, hey, Megan, got an exclusive announcement right up your alley, on demand and start by a minority. Although I'm not sure Indian American is a minority in the tech space. Funny emoji. I'm trying to add a humor, right? And so this is stuff that I knew about Megan already. So do a little bit of research, literally takes about five to 10 minutes. And it makes your email sound so much better than the hundreds that they get on a daily basis. Cool. What do you think? You like it? All right. Here is the greatest growth hack of all time. If you guys have been watching our YouTube, I've been following along. I talk about this constantly and I just did something together. I put together another presentation that's going to be an upcoming YouTube video where it gives you examples with subscri subscription-based apps. So we can get into that if we have some time, but that is my favorite way. This is my favorite way of driving hundreds of thousands of downloads. And I know everything is moving to subscription, so I thought it was very timely to kind of put this presentation together. And frankly, a client asked, and he's like, hey, uh, what are some examples? So I was like, I have tons of examples. I should actually probably put them all together. So here it is. It is, if you guys heard about it before, what I call a free promotion. I used to call it pay to free, but then it confused a ton of people. So I call it a free promotion. And what that means is you give away something within the app that is normally paid, but you make it free for a couple of days and then you get press for it. Okay. It's pretty simple. I know it's a little bit complicated because you're like, Hey, what, what about this app? What about this app? Trust me. I've done it with all forms of apps. It works and drives tens of thousands of downloads. It is the best performing from a downloads perspective for, for driving downloads than any other campaign. All right. You won't get a better CPI because frankly, you're not paying a dime to do this. Here's what you can do. So paid apps, obviously, if you got a paid app and you make it free, that's the traditional route. That's why I used to call it paid to free because you have a paid app and you're making it free for a couple of days. Okay. In-app purchases. Now for you tech geeks out there, you, you might be one of those. In-app purchases that are non-consumable, meaning you can buy this once and get it forever, forever. Let me come on the video too. What up? 
All right, and then virtual goods. So we've done it for virtual characters, especially for these Clash of Clans type of games where you know you have to give away certain things. And so we've done it with virtual goods and then subscriptions. So with subscriptions, unfortunately, you can no longer do a trial. You have to do something that just gives away the content, the premium content or the premium, whatever it is, for free for X amount of days. So if you got a meditation app, a fitness app, you got to make your content, the premium content, free for let's say a week or a month. I've done it up to a month too. So about a couple of days is the minimum, but if you wanna go up to a week, even better. Now here's the key thing to running this campaign. You need to get press. The big sites that cover is, this campaign is gonna be App Advice. It's gonna be BGR is another campaign. Iowa Snoops, I think it's called. But if you just Google pay to free, you'll find all the sites that cover this, okay? Now here's what happened. This is one of my apps that I ran this on. So I'm sharing this data with you. Here's what we did when we ran it on app advice. We got close to 18,000. In a nutshell, it's the first two days that are gonna be the most beneficial. We got over 30, 000, about approximately 30,000 downloads from running this campaign through app advice alone, okay? So that was amazing. It's like, wow. I got you, Michael. So and then what I happened, what happened was a couple of weeks later, I was like, hmm. What would happen if I didn't tell anybody? You know, AppFest was great. What if I don't tell anybody? So I don't. I didn't tell anybody, and I got like three hundred downloads. Right? You do the math. We got thirty thousand downloads versus three hundred by tell by telling AppAdvice got thirty thousand by not telling a single soul. I got three hundred. I didn't even tell my wife for crying out loud. So you need to get press for this campaign. All right, and AppAdvice is the big one from what I've seen from my experience. That is the biggest one in terms of driving downloads. Because most of those downloads are coming through an app that they have called AppsCon Free. So you guys can download that. All right, like I said, why I love this campaign, it could drive hundreds of thousands. I've done that a couple of times, two times. I know, I should flip this, two times. And then cross promotion. So what usually happens is they download one of my apps that gets 30,000. The rest of my portfolio gets more downloads because people are checking out my other apps. So it's a great cross promotion activity. I generally run this campaign. If I've got a brand new app launching, I run it with some of my older apps just to drive awareness for my new app. It increases sales. So I got you, Michael, you're gonna get more subscribers. Anytime we run it with subscription-based apps, you're gonna get more subscribers. And obviously, because this is more of an ASO type of online meetup, you're gonna get increased keyword rankings. Now they don't always last, but I have seen it with certain clients where they do last and man, that's amazing. It's a really great outcome. All right, Michael asks, will App Advice write about subscription with longer trial periods? No, unfortunately not. So what happened, Michael, was App Advice used to cover it. I was like, hey, there's a free trial and then they would cover it. But unfortunately their users got really pissed off that they had to sign up for a trial. So what you have to do is not make it a trial. So you just have to give away the content. So for example, you can have promo codes, right? And say, hey, put this promo code, app advice, for example, into the app, in this section, maybe in the profile section, and you'll unlock premium content for free for a week. That's it, no trial, no nothing. So the key is no trial. I've done it with other clients that make it so stinking easy. Go to your profile page and click this little button that's up here, and then that unlocks seven days for free. So it doesn't require that much technical help. And that's what I have screenshots for my upcoming video, but it shows you like, hey, this is how you can do it with subscription-based apps because let's face it, that's all, that's where the, the app world is headed into. All right, Tweet asks, any sites like App Advice, but for other regions? Yeah, Tweet, there are tons of sites like this. For APAC and then India, there's a ton, especially for APAC that I know. I think there's some Chinese-based sites out there. I, App Advice is the big one because everybody else covers it, but I know there's a few others and I don't have a list of them. So maybe if you just Google, like I said, paid apps gone free, that's where you'll probably find them, but you'll find a lot of them. There are tons. All right. Oh, Chris, all right, a lot of questions coming in. I like this and I'll do this because it's timely, but oops, sorry about that. All right, Chris says, how does this help paid apps that make that you make free when you go back to paid? Chris, Chris, I've got a great example for you. So I've got a client who had a $12 app, okay? He still runs this campaign after me, but we made it free for a day, one day only. 
drove 30,000 downloads. What happened, Chris, is because we drove them so as much, the day we went back to paid, we hacked the top charts for paid apps. And we made an extra cool $1,000 the very next day, right? So got the 30,000 in, and then we got an additional $1,000 the very next day, just one day. That's how it helps. Maybe super useful. Read one, yeah, you know, super useful. Region specific would be super useful. Help me, help you. Go find them out for me, man. I need some help. It's not hard. All right, let's move on. Other marketing channels, we've got about seven minutes and I wanna make sure we're good on time. So these are some of the channels that I've been actually focused on because you know everybody understands Facebook ads is out there, you know the ad networks, you've got Instagram marketing. So all these unique channels out there, the ones here are ones that I feel like not enough people are talking about. So I'm gonna cover that on there. Ridwan, okay, good. Ridwan said he's gonna write a blog post on this. So he's gonna email me and I'll shoot out to the rest of the world and to app follow so you guys can follow along as well. I love this community, right? All right, influencer marketing. Now, influencer marketing can get pretty costly. Here's a website that I love to use called Shoutcart, shoutcart.com. What they do is, it is sort of like a Google for influencers where you can search on different topics, pets, fitness, meditation, wellness, and then find the right influencer. And they have a score for that influencer in terms of engagement. So it's really cheap. You can get a few for under $100. Right, I ran a couple of different campaigns with different influencers with the hundred dollar campaigns, and then you can give them the creative. You say, "Hey, you know, share this video, share this image, and make sure you put it in the link into the bio or search for it." Right, so you can do all that within Shoutcart, and you could just click buy and then work with them. Now, few caveats: make sure you plan ahead because sometimes these influencers take a lot of time. They're too busy pic posting pictures, right? They take a lot of time getting back to you. So make sure you plan ahead. That's first. Secondly, what you want to do is make sure your tracking is ready to go. That was my mistake. I learned the hard way. Okay. So don't learn from my mistakes. That's what wise people do. They learn from other people's mistakes. But what I did was I actually used the bit.ly link. It just wasn't tracking properly. So make sure you have the right tracking in place before you run it. Cause I had no idea. I saw clicks on that bit.ly link, but I had no idea how many downloads it drove. So we weren't using like, you know, any of the attribution tools out there. I was trying to actually use the app store connect attribution tools and it just didn't work out well. So make sure you have your attribution in place. But I feel like from a cost perspective, it is a great channel because you, you know, it takes a lot of work finding these, these influencers and this saves you a ton of time doing that. Next. One thing that I'm very fascinated on is Reddit marketing. So Reddit has ads and I've heard from other developers who've done phenomenally well with Reddit ads. So definitely take a look at that if you want to sort of run some ads on Reddit. Cause I think, you know, everybody understands Facebook, it's getting really costly in there and really competitive. So I like finding these different channels that are going to be less costly than the obvious ones. So that's one. Go on Reddit, run some ads, run some quick tests, especially because you can then target between subreddits. And speaking of subreddits, this is a site called Social Elves, socialelves.com. Let Josh know I sent you, all right? I don't get any plugs for this, but essentially what they do is they will guarantee that you pick the right subreddit, they'll get your post up to the very top. Right? And so I ran this with a couple of different tests for clients and we saw pretty decent eight CPIs. So when you compare it to like Facebook and all this stuff, we spent about, I would say a hundred bucks running this campaign on a subreddit. And we saw, you know, like really decent CPIs under 50 cent CPIs running this type of campaign. It wasn't as big as app advice when I was running these type of like different type of campaigns, but I also thought like pretty decent in terms of just spending a hundred bucks and getting 400, 500,000 downloads through there. And so if you find the right channel, I know certain clients that have done really well. If you find the right subreddit, then you can do phenomenally well and even to the thousands and you know, hundreds of thousands, hopefully. So we're, we're gonna run a campaign pretty soon on a few different subreddits for our sports app. And I'll share that data with you guys when I have it ready to go. But for the first few that I did really effective so far. Cool. All right, guys, that's all I have. Bam, I'm right on time. I'm freaking good at this stuff. All right, if you got any questions for me, please leave it into the comments on the side. I think that's where I'm seeing it. And if you need to follow up, I am just at appmasters.com or steve at appmasters.com as well. 
Okay. Yeah. Red one says, you know, Reddit ads are a fickle mistress for me, but have heard from others that when it works, it really works. It's true. Check it out. I mean, obviously if you know, the way I like to think about stuff is I don't want to be where everybody else is. If everybody else is there probably means I'm a little too late. So I want to be where other people are not. And that's why I talk about these more unique campaigns because let the rest of the world talk about Facebook ads, Instagram ads, but whatever, blah, 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 blah. right? Lucy, favorite attribution tools. You know, frankly, you're gonna have to pay for some of them. Mixed panel, really good one. Google Analytics, completely free, really good. Firebase, if you're not too huge, really good. If you wanna look at some analytics in there as well. I don't know if they do attribution, I think they do. But you know, like I like to stay nimble at first, cheap. And then as I grow, I'll look into it. So I think, you know, Google Analytics can get you all far, very far. I had one client, really big name client, but not so much in the app space and more in the web space. But we're using Google Analytics to track like funnel convert optimization. We're tracking a lot of different stuff. So Google Analytics would be a good one too. There you go. 